I greet you this wonderful morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription. Welcome. I'm excited as always to have an opportunity to still speak to the people of God concerning His Word. The Bible tells us that we should be uh, doing the work, God of, the work of God in season and out of season. So even in this particular time, I still want to bring the Word of God to us, and I believe that the Lord is going to minister to us. Now, many things have been spoken concerning the events that are going on in the nations today, and I'm speaking categorically about the pandemic that is the COVID-19, the coronavirus that has hit nations, all the nations of the world, and, and people have been having a discussion uh, where is God in these matters. I want to read the Bible in John chapter number 3 and verse number 16, a scripture that uh, we all know, a very, very common scripture that gives us the heart of God. Now, this is very, very important because this is actually the heart of God towards humanity. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Let me go through verse number 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse number 20. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Now, child of God, you will realize that God, from the beginning, has always loved the world. And even when sacrifices did not achieve much, in the Old Testament, people were giving animals as sacrifices to, to atone them of sin. Every time somebody felt he had done sin or he had actually committed sin, they gave an animal for the sin. Now, these sacrifices were not enough. That is, they kept offering animals, bulls and lambs and all that, but the sin continued. Now, it's important that for you to understand that God gave one ultimate sacrifice in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who went on the cross. He was the one and only and final sacrifice for man. And that's why Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What does this mean? It means that God deeply loves mankind. Despite the fact that the pandemic has been uh, making problems in nations up to this point, I still want to let you know that God still loves us. God still loves you. And he has given us a path. He has given us a way that if we pursue and if we follow, then great things are going to work. God did not just give his son. And in fact, he says he did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I believe at this particular time, many people in the world are being driven towards worship of God. They're having a, a, now a heart for God. Is it possible that the world had drifted so much away from God? Is it possible that many people had been concerned with the cares of this world? The Bible tells us, for what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lost his own soul? So the Bible tells us, seek ye the kingdom of God first and its righteousness and all these things will be added to you. What is God fundamentally saying? He says he did not send his son to the world to condemn it, but the world through him might be saved. I still believe that at this particular point in time, it is still God who is going to be the ultimate savior concerning the pandemic that's going on in the world. And I'm not saying that we should not follow things that government is saying. Yes, we will follow because we are people that are subject to authority. When government gives directives or protocols, medical protocols we need to follow, we will follow. We will follow, we will adhere. 
Jesus said, give Caesar what is Caesar. So we will follow what protocols the government is giving. But I want to tell you there's still a part for God. Now, I have discussed on this, on this program, I've talked about society and how it has got three pillars, and that these pillars must work together so that society can be stable. I talked about intellectual pillar, political pillar, and religious or spiritual pillar. Now, all these pillars are key and important in society. Doctors have their role to play. And they, but they also need the political pillar and the spiritual pillar. Politicians have got a role to play, but they need the intellectual pillar and the spiritual pillar. Spiritual pillar is, a, in fact, very important, but it still needs the intellectual and political pillar for this to work properly in a society. Allow me to explain and say, the Bible tells us, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I also want to bring it to speed that this scripture does not talk about a specific uh, uh, denomination. Doesn't talk, doesn't talk about a specific spiritual leader. Because people have been deluded to imagine that the solution to their lives is a denomination by name. It is a certain spiritual leader by name. Now, I want to say that it's important. You could be in a denomination. That is okay. You could be a person who respects a spiritual leader. That is okay. That is fine. But I want to tell you that no denomination died for anybody. Not even a person died for any other person. It's only Jesus that went on the cross. No wonder the Bible here is specific. That he who believes in him is not condemned. Believing in who? Believing in Jesus. Not believing in your denomination. Not believing in a certain spiritual person here or there. No. It's about Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us, and this is the condemnation that the light came into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, I want to bring it to speed and let you know that indeed the world has been evil. A lot of things have gone on in this world that are unimaginable. Things that are happening, that people, things that ha, 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 are even difficult to mention. Evil things. We have seen lots of tribalism, nepotism, a lot of immorality. All these things are happening in the world today. People don't care for any other selfishness, greediness. All these things have been seen in society today. Nations fighting against each other. You know, blasphemy. A lot of things that are going on. Things uh, that, are, that are wrong. Sodomy. All these things. And homosexuality. Things that are an abomination before the Lord. This is something we have to talk about. Now, evil has increased in society. The Bible tells us, and therefore, uh, and this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, it is true that society has been moving in evil, evil doing. The Bible tells us that is already a condemnation. For everyone who practices evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have done, they have been done in God. Child of God, as we interrogate the ongoings of life today, it's important for us to understand the place of God. Now, people, certain countries, people are under curfew, lockdown. That means people now are having more time with their families and their children, timing they have not been able to have before. Is it that God is pushing us to us strengthening the family unit? In one of my programs, I said, if the family unit is not standing correctly, then a nation is in problems. So a family unit also is critical in the dimension of how God strengthens our society. Now, this is important for us to understand. To understand. It's important to understand the timings we're living in right now. We must know what we have to do. And I came to tell you this morning, we need to reconsider our stand and our position in God. Where do we stand? Are we doing the right thing? Are we involved in the right situations? Are we doing what God expects of us? We must interrogate our position in God. We must think about, are we having a good relationship with God? Now, if our vertical relationship with God is okay, then it goes without saying that our horizontal relationships with people will be okay. This is what God is speaking to us this morning. And I came to tell you, God still loves you. God loves us. God has got a good plan, a good purpose for each one of us. Even in the midst, the circumstances we find ourselves in, God is still speaking to us. 
And I came to speak to you, child of God, wherever you are, to let you know that our God is still desiring to make things work for you and to work for me. This is God's word for us this morning. I pray that you can hold on it, you can move with it, and it can change the situation in your life. Our God is alive, our God is real, and is working behind the scene to ensure that we are able to worship him in truth and in spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whom you did not withhold but gave him to the world, O Lord, by loving us so much that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This morning, we have discussed your love, that amidst the situation we find ourselves in, you still love us, O God. You help us, my Father, to deal with evil, that we can, my Father, put on the righteousness of God. I want to thank you for every listener and every viewer of this message, that you bless our lives, Lord Jesus, and that all glory and honor will come back to you. I want to bless you, Master. I want to lift you and want to honor you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Thomas, my friend. The Lord bless you for choosing to follow this program this morning. I believe you've been blessed, and I believe that the Lord is doing something extraordinary to you. Now, this message is going to be existing on my YouTube page. You can find it, uh, Johnston Akwabisakwa. You can find all these videos on our YouTube page. That's I've been preached today and even before. But the Lord continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. I urge you to subscribe also to the YouTube uh, page and the Lord will bless you. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription. Your daily morning dose of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and the Lord bless you.